Hello, and welcome to the English version of how to use Microsoft Teams on your Android tablet, your iPad, your Android phone, or your iPhone. The Hazleton Area School District has decided to deliver its online virtual instruction using the program called Microsoft Teams. If you're familiar with Zoom, Teams and Zoom are somewhat similar. In Zoom, you can have a meeting and you'll see multiple people and they can talk to one another and share screens with one another and you can chat with one another. In Teams, you can have a meeting, see multiple people, talk with one another, share meetings with one another, chat with one another. You can do the same thing. The reason the district has chosen Teams is for its educational value. Inside of Teams, unlike in Zoom, teachers can assign lessons, they can grade lessons, they can uh, give a child an, an actual notebook, and the child could access all of his or her notes. The child has the ability to access Microsoft Word through Teams, PowerPoint, the child has drawing tools inside of Teams, so it's, it's really a powerful program. With that said, Teams can be run on a tablet, on a phone, but you are much better served using Teams on a laptop or a computer with an internet browser. The district fully will realizes that not every student will have a laptop at the start of the school year. We are working diligently to provide every single student with a laptop to make their experience in Teams all the better. However, the reality is we're not going to have enough for everybody right at the beginning of the year. But we also know that the vast majority of parents have access to the internet through a phone or through a tablet. And the nice thing about the way we're delivering the instruction this year is if you only have a minimal amount of data, if you don't have a big data package, you could go into Teams, you can get the work, you can watch a, a lesson, and then you can close it, you don't have to be on anymore, and you can do all the work offline. So we really put some time into thinking, how are we going to serve all of our parents? Our parents with very limited access, and then our parents who have full-blown access. So, what is Teams? Teams, I really think Teams should be called schools, because I want you to look at Teams as a school. Once your child walks into a school, they would go into their first period class, or they would go into their homeroom. My kindergarten, first and second grade, sixth grade, everybody goes right into their homeroom for their first period. Then in high school, in upper elementary, they change classes and they go to their next they go to their next class. And then third period, they go to their next class. Then they have lunch, and then they go to their next class, so on and so forth throughout the day. So throughout the day, a a student may see as many as 10 teachers throughout that day. Or a student may see as little as three. It all depends on your situation. Let's assume a kindergarten, first and second grade student who receives no related services, who doesn't have ESL, who doesn't have speech, who doesn't have physical therapy, who has no related services whatsoever. That child, a first and second grader, in the school district. A first grader will see their homeroom teacher, they'll see their music teacher, their art teacher, and their gym teacher. A first and second grade student will see four teachers. A kindergarten student will only see one teacher. A third grade student will see their reading teacher, their math teacher, their science and social studies teacher, their music, their art, their gym, plus any related services. So like I said, a student could see in the course of a regular school day up to 10 teachers. Depending upon the services your child receives, that's how many teachers they will see. 
So when you open up Teams, you will see all the teachers that your child has throughout the entire day. If your child only has two teachers, they'll see two teachers in Teams. If your child has 10 teachers, they'll see 10 teachers in Teams. High school students are just going to follow their normal schedule. They go into their first period class, they go into their second period class, they would see their ESL teacher when it's time to see their ESL teacher or their learning support teacher. You would just follow it through like a regular day. The elementary teachers, your classroom teacher, will tell you when to go. So if I'm a first grade student and, and I'm in a math lesson, the teacher might say, okay, boys and girls, it's time for music now. We're going to log out of this team and I want you to go over to your music teacher's channel and go into your music teacher's class. So, like I said, teams should be called schools. So how do you access Teams? The first thing you need to do is download the program. If you have an Android device, like I do, you'll go to the Play Store. If you have an Apple iPad or an iPhone, you'll go to the App Store and you'll do the same exact thing. So you go to the Play Store and you search for Teams. Be careful when you're searching. Make sure you see Microsoft Teams. Make sure you see the two people with the little T by it and click on that and download it. So you download Microsoft Teams. You may want to stop the video or pause the video at this time and go ahead and download Teams. Once Teams is downloaded, it'll be on your in your app drawer or right on your home screen, you will log into Teams. When you click on Teams, you're going to be asked for a username and password. Every child in the Hazleton Area School District will be given an email address, and the email address will end at HASD. So every child will have the first part of their email address, and it'll end at HASDK one two dot org so every child email address will end like that and then what will identify them as unique would be the beginning portion of their email address so if i have five children each child will be given their unique email address and unique password we realize that there might be multiple students in a house and limited amount of devices. Because of that, that's why we are supplementing with offline materials. But we also know that the vast majority, if not all of our parents, do have access to the internet via a phone or a tablet. And we took that into great consideration as we we're developing the teams and we're developing our approach to delivering instruction. So you do need to know that if you have multiple students at home, if you have three or four children, you have to log on as child one, get all the information, then you'd have to log off and then log on again as child two, and then log off and log back on and get the information for child three because each child belongs to a different team and each team has their child's information. So. Let's log into a team and see what it's like. When you log into Teams, you click on the team. You'll be prompted for your child's username and password. In this instance, when you're logging onto Teams, they need to log on with an email address. I'm going to log on with the account wires at hasdk12.org. When you log your child on. You won't be logging on as wires. You'll be logging on whatever their username is and your username will be given to you by the district either through email, a phone call. We will get you your child's username but please understand that it'll be at hasdk12.org and then your child's particular username. Then you click sign in. When you sign in it'll ask you for a password. Your password will also be given to you. Let me enter it. 
After you put your password in, you will come to this section where it explains a little bit about Teams. You can read that. Just hit next, 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 and then got it. And you are now into Teams. To see all of your child's teams, to see all of your child's teams, click down here, the button with the three people. If you have multiple children, you're going to need to log out and then log back in as the other children. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to log out and then log back in as another child. But let's look at what Teams is all about. So let's take a look at what this is. This is an example of a primary team. This particular student has a homeroom teacher, my homeroom teacher. This particular student has an art teacher. This particular student has a gym teacher. This particular student has an ESL teacher. This particular student has a learning support teacher. Like I said, every teacher that your child sees throughout the day will be listed. There's their homeroom teacher, there's their art teacher, there's their gym teacher, as I scroll up, there's their ESL teacher, there's their learning support teacher. Also notice under each one of the teacher's names, there's different what we call channels. So the homeroom teacher has a general channel, a math channel, and a reading channel. The art teacher has a general channel, and a crayons channel, and a painting channel. This gym teacher has a general channel, a run-in-place channel, and a workouts channel. This ESL teacher has a general channel and an all English channel. And this particular learning support teacher has a general channel and a math group channel. Every teacher has the ability to create as many channels as they see fit. And it's the responsibility of the teacher to explain to the children which channel they would like them to be in and what's happening. So every teacher will explain their channels. Let's take a look at my homeroom teacher. My homeroom teacher, especially in K1 and 2, this is where you're going to receive the vast, the majority of the information throughout the day. So your K1-2 teachers will tell you when it's time for music, will tell you when it's time for art, will tell you if you need to go to your, emotion, your learning support class or your speech class. The K1-2 will be really dictated by your homeroom teacher. Every other grade, you just follow, you simply follow your schedule. So if you have reading at nine, you, go, you log in at nine. You go to your reading teacher at nine. Then if you have math at 10, you go to your math class. And then if you have lunch, then you're off, and then you come back for your PE or your gym class at 12. You just follow your schedule. Um, primary teachers will kind of guide our little ones through where they need to be. All right, let's take a look at the general channel in a primary in a primary setting. When I go to the general channel, you'll see an agenda. If you look at this agenda, there are eight items, but there's a little see more button. That means the teacher has more there. So you would want to click the see more. I want you to watch what happens. There's some information down here, but I need to see my entire agenda. So I would click see more and that information seems to have gone away. It really didn't though. You're just looking at the entire agenda to get back. And this is, I'm going to ask everybody, even my Android people that have back buttons. When you want to move back, use the back arrow. That's at the top left-hand corner of the screen. So if I want to go back to my channel, now there I'm back in my general channel, and I have all the information. And we will explain exactly what these mean in a, in a minute. So I'm in my general channel. Everything is laid out really nicely. It tells you where you are. I'm in the general channel, and I am in my homeroom teacher's team. 
Let me hit the back arrow button for a second. And let me go into the painting channel of my art teacher. Watch what happens. If I go to the painting channel of my art teacher, it tells me where I am. I'm in the painting channel of my art teacher. To go back, I hit the back button, and it brings me back to my regular team. So let's go back to my homeroom teacher's general channel and see what's going on. I see that there's more that the teacher wants me to do, and I'm going to assume that I am a student right now with limited access. I'm going to read through this uh, as a student who has limited internet access. So the first thing is we're told that portions of this lesson will be recorded, and you're going to see this every time you look at an agenda because we want you to be aware that we will be recording portions of the lesson so that students who are unable to attend at the particular time can go back and listen to that recording. Um, when the teacher is recording a lesson, they will turn off the incoming cameras, so your child will not be on, your child's face will not be on that recording. However, if your child asks a question during that time, if the, if the child asks a question during the time it's being recorded, your child's voice will be on that recording and you need to know. So if you, as a parent, don't even want your child's voice on there, make sure you mute their microphone or tell them hold their question until the end of class. The teacher will tell you when it's being recorded and when they are ending the recording. So whoever's uncomfortable can ask their questions when the, the recording is over. So on this teacher's next part, it says log in to the morning meeting at 9.15. I am especially imploring our kindergarten, first, second, even third, fourth grade parents to please try to attend the meetings at the very, very least, if you possibly can. Because this is where all the instruction is going to be delivered. During this morning meeting, all of our instruction is going to be uh, delivered at that time. The teacher will tell you exactly what you have to do, especially in our primary classes. They're going to tell you exactly what you have to do throughout the day. So this is where you can get all of your information to be, to be used throughout the day. So in this particular teacher's class, they're telling you the morning meeting's at 9.15, and then they're telling you once the meeting is over, they want you to do pages three and four in your reading workbook. Notice, this is for students with limited internet access. So if you can't do the online component of what the teacher prescribed, you will have your books and you'll be able to do your, you'll be able to do the work that the teacher assigned. Now, if you do have internet access, they're asking you to log into Raz Kids and do the stories assigned to you. Well, how do I log into Raz Kids? I will show you that at the end of this video, how you log into other things. Also, morning meeting, so important. That's when the teacher will be explaining what you have to do. So this particular child has to log into Raz Kids and do the stories. That's for, for students with in internet access. The teachers are also telling them to log into Wonders and do the assigned work, and that's for students with internet access. For our students that have internet access, all of our textbooks are online in the elementary grades, K to, K to 6, and there are some other ones in 7 through 8. Um, you'd have to ask those particular teachers which books are online. So be at those morning meetings to ask those important questions. But I know our K-6 absolutely have all of their art, I mean, have all of their reading and their math online, and that's for students with internet access. And I'll show you how to log into that later. Again, following this agenda, we want you to log into the afternoon meeting at one o'clock. And then for those students with limited internet access, we want you to do pages four and five in your math book. For students with internet access, you're going to log into my math and do the assigned work. And you're also going to log into Clever and work for 20 minutes on math and 20 minutes on reading. And that's for students with internet access. And all of this, all of this will be explained in detail by your teacher. So that's why it's important to attend that morning meeting. Okay, I read the assignment. I kind of know what I'm doing. Now I hit the back button the back button right here to go back. Now I'm back. 
Remember I told you that we're going to log into the morning meeting at 9.15? Well, this is how you do it. As you scroll up, you'll see morning meeting, September 8th, 2020 at 9.15. What you do is you click on that and then you're going to click join. When you click the join meeting, you will be inside the meeting with your teacher. You will see your teacher, you'll see your other classmates, the teacher will give all the explanation, the teacher will, will take it from there once you hit join. Over here it says log into the afternoon meeting at 1 p.m. If you scroll down, see here, afternoon meeting at 1 p.m. Click on it and then hit join. So this was an example of the reading channel. Your teacher might post work for you or hold meetings in their other channels. So there might be work in the math channel. There might be work in the reading channel. But you will know that from the general channel and the agenda. And the teacher will tell you. I'll tell you right in K1 and 2, in kindergarten, first and second grade, in the beginning, we're not going to put very much information in the math and the reading channel because we need you to get acclimated and we need you to understand how to get into these meetings. As we go through and children get the idea and parents get the idea, all the reading instruction will be delivered in the reading channel, all the math instruction will be delivered in the math channel. But like I said, in the beginning, everything is going to happen in the general channel. All right. I want to show you some other things in Teams. Down at the bottom, you have the three people. This takes you back to your Teams. And there's also a More button. If you click on the More button, It takes you out and allows you to do other things that your teacher might have assigned. If I go to my general channel, there's another thing that says more. So I'm in the general channel, I'm in my teacher, my home teacher's general channel, and I click on more and I see Clever, and I see Raz Kids. I see assignments. Let's go back. Remember the teacher told you in her general channel? They said, log in to Raz Kids and do the stories assigned to you. Log in to Raz Kids and do the stories assigned to you. The way you do that is you come up here where it says more. You click on the More button, and you'll go to the Raz Kids link. When I click on Raz Kids, it's going to open up another internet browser, and it's going to say, download the Raz Kids app. So if my kindergarten, first, and second grade students, you really want to download the Raz Kids app, and you can access Raz Kids through the Raz Kids app. Your teacher will explain to you exactly what to do on Raz Kids. In the general channel, it also told you to log into Clever. Clever. It said log into Clever and work for 20 minutes. The way you access that is you go to the general channel, you click on more, then you click on Clever. It'll ask you to either sign in with a Clever badge, and this is really K through 6, I'm certain of, I'm not sure of for the 7th and 8th grade, but the K through 6 can log in with a clever badge. You just hold it up to the, the phone's camera and it'll log you in. If you can't log in with a clever badge, you click log in with LDAP and you log in with your student's username and password that has been provided for you and you can access all the programs that are in Clever. So. Any information that your
teacher gives you, any information that your teacher gives you that makes you access outside programs like Clever or Raz Kids, if they're telling you to go somewhere outside of Teams to a different website, you will find that in the general channel under more. And that's where all the apps, that's where all the applications will live. There'll also be a class notebook in there. Your teacher will explain to you about the class notebook and how to use class notebook. All of this will be in English and in Spanish for our Spanish speaking people. But this is this, like I said, this was just the English version of it. I hope you have a better understanding of Teams. Please ask your teacher. If you have any questions, they'll be more than happy to go over anything with you. Once you went through Teams and you have all your information, you may need to log out and then log in as a different child. The way you do that is you click the three lines in the upper left-hand corner, right next to the word Team. You see Teams, and then there's three lines. You click those three lines, and then you click on settings. Let me do that again. You click the three lines, then you click on settings, and you look for the sign out button, and you click sign out. I want to do that one more time. When it's time to log out with a different user, you click the three lines, you click on settings, you click on sign out, it'll say are you sure you want to sign out, and you click OK. It'll sign you out. Once you're signed out, you can click down here where it says sign in with another account. And this is where you would sign in with your other child's name and you would continue to do that till all your children have the information they need.